does that mean? That does a coin, and then I look at it. What do I see? Well, that's the weird part. Looking at a coin is a measurement. By measuring an object, you disturb the state vector and force it into one of the two classical possibilities. Hold on. Somehow, in a way no one understands yet, a quantum coin would jump into being either heads or tails. Yes, Josh? Uh, how qu quickly does this happen? How quickly does this happen? Um, <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that one. Um, some physicists study issues like this, but it, it's not something that I could estimate off the top of my head. Sorry. One. Okay. Now, demonstration. For a real experiment, we can't use a coin. We have to use something that is really quantum mechanical. We'll use particles of light, which physicists call photons. This Heaney laser is going to be our source of photons. So how does a coin decide which face to show you? No one knows. But the probability of what face it chooses depends in a very simple way on the state vector before you disturb it by looking at it. The probability of a coin showing you heads is h squared. Where h, Some of these two the probabilities component of the state vector is, of course, the probability of it showing you tails. Yeah. Using Pythagoras, we see this, this as a geometrical squared. meaning. The sum of the squares of the components is the magnitude squared or length squared of the state vector, and so a state vector must have magnitude 1. Okay?